Electric vehicles are a major topic of discussion in this day and age. There's a growing concern about global warming, and given that vehicles contribute the largest share of greenhouse gases in the U.S., a move to zero emissions vehicles is highly appealing. The tech giant Tesla began this electric vehicle revolution by marketing their cars as technologically advanced and environmentally friendly. Because of this, every major car manufacturer has followed suit, and electric vehicles have seen greater adoption, popularity, and use across the world. On the surface, this seems like a wholly positive shift. Phasing out fossil fuel-based vehicles would help save the environment, after all. Unfortunately, in spite of their promotion and popularity, a shift to electric vehicles would fail to address the fundamental issues they claim to solve. It takes more than swapping an internal combustion engine with a battery pack to address climate change or dwindling natural resources, and many supporters of EVs are seemingly ignorant of this issue. With that being said, while electric cars are no silver bullet, they are a step in the right direction, and the only way they can become the environmental solution they claim to be is to look at and address the issues surrounding them. The problems with electric vehicles are numerous, with the biggest issue being how they get their energy in the first place. Electric vehicles are, well, electric, meaning they get their energy not from the combustion of fossil fuels, but by an internal battery pack. Unlike gas-powered cars, the mere use of an electric vehicle produces few, if any, emissions, a definite pro. However, an issue arises when you consider how an electric vehicle actually gets its power. The United States electrical grid is powered by numerous different sources of energy, with the majority coming from fossil fuels, the same fuel source used in gas-powered cars. Electric vehicles get their power from this grid, and while driving and charging them has less environmental impact than gas cars over a lifetime of use, there is still a comparable and significant environmental cost associated with every electric vehicle on the road. Outside of power issues, the production of electric vehicles is more environmentally damaging than that of their gas-powered counterparts. Whereas both gas and electric cars need the same materials for tires, frames, and useless DRM electronics, producing an electric car's battery is awful for the environment. Lithium, cobalt, and nickel are all essential elements for modern lithium-ion batteries, and their procurement is a dirty business, both environmentally and politically. Batteries also degrade over time, typically lasting about 10 to 20 years before they need to be replaced. In addition, if these spent batteries aren't properly disposed of in cases of crashes or simple negligence, they're extremely toxic to the environment. Finally, lithium-ion batteries have some inherent risks in their usage, primarily in the case of fires. While fires caused by electric vehicles are generally uncommon, if there's a serious crash or if the battery just wants to set itself alight, the resultant fires are difficult to put out and produce large quantities of toxic compounds. While the environmental issues associated with electric vehicles are significant, EVs have a number of limitations and inconveniences compared to modern gas-powered cars. For starters, charging an EV takes an exorbitant amount of time. Outside of designated charging stations, which still take longer than regular gas stations, you're looking at several hours to days for an EV to be fully charged. In addition, the range of an EV is limited compared to gas cars, typically half that of a conventional vehicle on a full tank of gas. This issue is admittedly minor, as an EV's max range is more than sufficient for one's daily commute, but is still an inconvenience for long-distance travel or shipping. Finally, a unique issue to electric vehicles is that of charging, specifically the charging ports or plugs used for different makes and models. Elon Musk, the world-famous union buster, actually patented a proprietary EV charging port for his series of Tesla electric vehicles. While this patent is technically open source, if another manufacturer were to use Tesla's patents, they wouldn't be able to sue Tesla for infringing on theirs. This terrible business proposition has prevented major car manufacturers from using Tesla's tech. Due to this, there are now myriad different types of charging plugs for electric vehicles, a night and day difference to the one nozzle used for gas-powered cars. In practical terms, universal and convenient methods of charging EVs are now much more difficult to achieve, making their mass adoption harder in turn. I mentioned previously that electric vehicles are a step in the right direction, and I do genuinely believe that. At the end of the day, gas-powered cars have an expiry date that will likely hit this century, if not next. The problem with EVs, however, is that their current design and the systems surrounding them fail to deliver the solution they promise. This of course begs the question, how can they be improved?
The biggest problem with electric vehicles is undeniably the battery. While the efficiency and affordability of lithium-ion batteries have both seen constant improvement over the past three decades, they're still extremely heavy, slow to charge, and environmentally damaging. However, there are two promising technologies that may alleviate this issue, with the first being solid-state batteries. Compared to modern liquid lithium-ion batteries, solid-state batteries come with a host of advantages, ranging from higher energy density, to faster charge times, to a wider range of temperatures where they can operate. In addition, solid-state batteries are much safer than their liquid counterparts. While both batteries contain highly reactive lithium, the liquid of a liquid-ion battery starts fires when exposed to air. Cutting out or significantly reducing this highly reactive liquid in solid-state batteries is a much safer alternative, and there's a substantial amount of research to support this claim. While solid-state batteries are still in the developmental phase, their implementation in EVs would lead to lighter, safer, and more efficient designs. The second technology that would improve electric vehicles is the hydrogen fuel cell. Hydrogen cells operate by generating electricity through the electrochemical reaction of hydrogen and oxygen, forming water in the process. It's a zero-emission reaction, its only product being water, and the fuel needed for it can be obtained by running the reaction in reverse. Hydrolysis is a process where electricity is run through water, splitting it into oxygen and hydrogen gas, which can later be used in a fuel cell. These fuel cells would operate in tandem with batteries, allowing the batteries themselves to be recharged with hydrogen during operation. Now there is a caveat with hydrogen cell technology, namely the kinds of vehicles that would utilize the tech. The general consensus among industry experts is that the most efficient personal vehicles will be battery only. This is due to the higher energy density of batteries compared to hydrogen cells, as the actual storage tanks for high-pressure hydrogen are extremely heavy. However, there is currently investment in the use of hydrogen cells for global shipping and rail, and with some technological advancement, there may be greater reliance on hydrogen as a power source in the future. While technological advancement will lead to more efficient and practical designs for electric vehicles, there's still the matter of charging them. Electric vehicles have the potential to be environmentally friendly and produce zero emissions, but not if they're powered with conventional sources of energy. Furthermore, as electric vehicles become more predominant and occupy a larger share of the road, our electric grid will have to expand to accommodate them. The solution in this case is quite simple, just start investing more in renewable sources of energy. The technology behind renewable energy has been constantly developed and improved over the past century or so, and is becoming more cost-effective than non-renewables in many cases. In addition, renewable sources of energy are substantially less environmentally damaging than their non-renewable counterparts, addressing another large fraction of emissions in the process. Phasing out non-renewable sources of energy and constructing more windmills and solar fields would both allow for a world reliant on EVs and make them truly zero emissions in the process. As an aside, there need to be concern over the supposed unreliability of renewable energy. Solar panels and windmills will undergo lows whenever it's cloudy or the air is still, but these energy droughts can be offset by their highs. During periods when the sky is clear and the wind strong, the excess energy produced can be used for hydrolysis, generating hydrogen for fuel cells in the process. There are also studies being done on retrofitting natural gas plants to take hydrogen as fuel, allowing for the continued use of current infrastructure. Such systems take advantage of the technologies mentioned earlier, and again simply use water as fuel. While developing an energy grid that accommodates electric vehicles is a must, so too is the proper recycling of such vehicles. We mentioned earlier that procuring raw materials for batteries is a rather dirty procedure, and is thus something we should minimize to the best of our ability. Furthermore, if you just toss a car battery in the dump or throw it in the ocean, the various acids and heavy metals within will further poison the environment. Fortunately, the technology behind battery recycling is both robust and efficient, capable of recovering the vast majority of materials used in a battery. Unfortunately, this technology has not been deployed to any substantial scale. To that end, expanding the use of this technology and making a concerted effort to recycle EVs should be a top priority. In doing so, the heavy environmental impact of battery production and disposal can be offset somewhat, and electric vehicles can further be the environmental solution they claim to be. The issues of climate change, environmental destruction, and the exhaustion of natural resources are all incredibly multifaceted. Electric vehicles, for what they're worth, can address aspects of these major issues, just not their current iteration. Fans of pop science and people who really like Elon Musk 
are under the impression that a full swap to EVs right this instant would solve these climate issues and actually be possible. The real answer lies in the maturation of technology surrounding EVs and further reliance on renewables. Or just having fewer cars in general, though that's a topic for another day. Either way, hopefully with these solutions in mind, we can make the challenges of protecting the environment and addressing climate change a bit easier to tackle. Thanks for reaching it to the end. Before going into some final thoughts on the topic, do please like, subscribe, and share the video around if you enjoyed it or learned something interesting. It would really mean a lot. With that out of the way, I think electric vehicles are an interesting topic, but one that isn't fully understood by the general public. Science and scientific progress is both fascinating and vital, but the presentation of recent discoveries and innovations has been… exaggerated, to say the least. Scientific progress is a rather slow process of pushing the efficiency of established fields, with the occasional breakthrough to speed things along. As pessimistic as this may sound, we are nowhere close to the quote-unquote future as many people understand it. While on the surface this may sound disappointing at most, problems arise when people have hope or faith in solutions that simply don't exist. This false hope and some nebulous solution just leads to complacency. After all, if you don't think there's a problem, you won't tackle it. The only remedy is a broader understanding of the issues at hand, so they can be acknowledged and then properly addressed. Hopefully this video has helped to elucidate some of these issues, both regarding EVs and the phenomena surrounding them, and in turn, we can go forward and advocate for true solutions. Regarding the channel, it's been a little while since my last serious upload. May was a bit of a weird month for me, and I spent most of it writing a script for a much longer production which I will likely tackle next. This vid is meant to be something of a buffer, a shorter and thus easier production to cover in the meantime, as I don't want to go much longer than a month without an upload. In any event, thanks again for reaching the end, do the things that make the algorithm happy, and until next time, take care.